Hello and good day to everybody. This is Robert Rainey with CGG Geo Softwares. Today we'll be going over some tips and tricks for running our PowerLog software, which is our Petrophysical Suite. Uh, specifically today we'll be going over how to make a SEDSTRAT log using FACES Identification. Now FACES Identification is our additional module. It's one of five. Uh, specifically, this one is used in conjunction with the curves that you've already gotten set up with your well, and you are using an algorithm called the KNN nearest algorithm to go in to determine facies based on values you have chosen for your curves. Now, one of the things I'm showing you here, uh, I've got our module open on the left. All right, so that's our FACES classification module right there. And this is our well, okay? So we're using what we call our Jurassic 2 well, which is an analyzation of our smack over, all right, for any of you that are familiar with that. Now, using this module is rather simple. Uh, once you've got everything set up, you've got your curves here. You've got some block curves you can produce, and those we use for QC. You'll see they're over on top of the curves you have in your log plot. Uh, and you've got to set up your lithology table. So you have a lithology table inside of our project options. Go right down here to category types. And this is the one we're using right now. So these are just the things we're currently focusing on. So we don't really expect much salt in here, but in some of the wells uh, in this region, you might find a little bit. So it's, it's in our column. And hydrites, dolomites, limestones, and sandstones. Those are primarily what we're looking at, as well as shales. Uh, every now and then you might find some marls or some silts, but that's going to be up to you and your identifications here. So once you have this set up, uh, I would highly recommend setting up with values ranging from least to highest uh, in erosion, and I'll get into why a little bit later, um, because there's a couple of different options with making your sedge strat log. But if, as a basis, I always recommend doing it in some kind of order that you can decide. Um, the other prep things you need to do other than that would be to have a deterministic and a stochastic uh, mineral model. Uh, one or the other is good. Both is better. It will give you a better idea of what you're looking at and give you a better way to decide exactly how you want to classify something. Now, once you've got all of your curves set up as well as your models, uh, the first step here is to just go in and start identifying different faces. And the best example I can give you is literally just the first one we've done here is this. I go in, I click on the spot I am choosing. In this case, I clicked right here. And I identify that as a shale. Okay, And then you go on through the rest of your well, and I do the same thing. You click on and highlight the area where you have determined, no, I know what this facies is. Now, facies can either be a rock type, such as sandstone or something like that, or you can actually identify it as turbidite or uh, riverbed, anything you want. Okay? However you define it, it just needs to be associated with values in your gamma ray, in your resistivity, density, neutron, SP, or U, uh, and you can decide what you do. You you can actually only use one curve if that's what you want. Uh, I do have clients who literally have one curve that alternates between three values, and that's how they identify their facies. It's entirely up to you. Um, but we'll go ahead and continue with where we're talking. So I've gone through and highlighted my particular choices for my facies, and then I've created my facies log. And I'll go ahead and show that to you. And it's this guy right here. So. My facies log, let me get out of this, is right here. And it's just a full column showing you everything I've chosen as I've gone through this. So the best bet is to run a basic consensus, get an idea, and then go through and critique things. But once you're happy, now we want to go in and actually create that said column that I was talking about. All right? So to do that, we need to make another track, okay? And uh, what we do is take the curve that was generated, our facies curve, and run it through a filter. So what I've done here is I took my facies curve, 
just add an extra letter on the end, run a mean average time, and then just click run, and you're done. Then you want to set a new one, and I usually just call it a sed log track, okay? And in this sed log track, you want to put the facies curve itself right here, and then two versions of the same curve that you just edited and filtered, all right? Now, then you're going to alternate those values like that. See that? And then in the first one, you want in the from to be zero and then give it a color. And then the second one is two, zero, and a color, just like that. Okay, and I've already created this, like I said. And poof, there we are. Uh, let me go ahead and make that larger for you. It'll be a little bit easier to see. So instead of two, we're going to make this a three. And I'm going to go ahead and hide my faces log now. Okay, so there we go. So there is a very quick and easy sed log. Now, ultimately, this took me about two hours. And that was mostly because of getting everything set up with my curves, getting my multi-min and my stat min run and happy with where I'm at, and then going in and building my facies. So this, this is a good solid half of day of work, so two to four hours, depending on what you're working on. Um, but the ultimate results, very nice and concise. Uh, you're able to go in and use those mineral volumes you have and show exactly what you're looking for uh, to your reservoir uh, characterization. Um, now, there's another option here instead of using your facies log. Uh, so like I said, this is mostly for your set strut uh, column. However, there is another option that is just as good and actually in some cases better. And that is, instead of using your said strat log, you use your gamma ray log, just like this right here. So instead of, like I said before, using that said strat log, you just go in and put in gamma ray, and of course use larger values than you would for your faces, of course. In this case, I use a different color, but that's quite all right. You use whatever color you choose. Um, and we'll just hit that. Let me zoom in for you. But that using the gamma ray, gives you a very concise view of what those gamma ray values mean. All right, and see, as that gamma ray decreases, you see more sands. As it goes in between, you see limestones. And then, of course, as it increases, we're going to see some of our anhydrites in here. Um, and, of course, excuse me, but we've switched over to a different well in this case, uh, much more of a uh, conventional play. So, but that is another option for you. So, like I said, the first one, using the faces, is a very straightforward said column, whereas the second one just uses the gamma ray, which looks a lot more flowy uh, and makes for a better picture overall. It makes for a better flow with your workflow. Uh, but it just depends on what you're looking for. But there you go. So that's our little tips and tricks for the day. I hope you all have had a wonderful little time with us and please feel free to come back anytime if you have questions we have a wonderful support staff uh, have a great day thank you very much